Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is Letters to Blue. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Every week I take some of the letters that have been uh, submitted from viewer comments or from emails or from Instagram, and I roll it all into one episode. So sort of like Q&A Tuesday, but extended. <laughs> um, if you would like to have your letter submitted, maybe you have a story to share, or you just have a question, uh, let me know, comment below or send me an email. I will include my email address in the description box below. So let's get started. Thank you to everybody who submitted their letter. And here we go, first letter. Uh, thank you so much for your videos. I am starting or completing my courses for medical billing and coding in the next few weeks. I started the course a few years ago and was accepted into the cardiac sonographer program. So didn't complete Code, coding and billing courses. Um, I'm so excited to get started. I have been a echocardiographer for the last five years and it is not for me. I need something that isn't so hands-on with patient care since I know that isn't my strong suit. A lot of times when people are making the transition from a different side of medical to, into medical coding, you're bringing with you a lot of transferable skills. Somebody who is a echocardiographer um, is going to have a lot of really good anatomy, right? Because you have to know the anatomy very well. Uh, even if it is just um, in the cardiac area, it's okay because that'll get you started. Uh, you already know your medical terminology. All of these are all transferable skills that you can put on your resume. Having a previous background as a nurse or as an echocardiographer um, isn't necessarily going to guarantee that you are going to get in faster, uh, but it will give you, like I said, those transferable skills that you could put on your resume. And that is just as valuable. So always make sure that you don't discount your knowledge base. A lot of times when you're looking in these job listings for medical coders, they will say that you have to have a strong grasp of medical terminology, anatomy, and physio. So if you have that, or if you've taken those classes, you need to have it on your resume. That is so, so important. And a lot of people discount that, they leave it off, and you know then they don't understand why they're not getting called back. You know, if it's telling you in the job posting that they want that experience and you have it, put it in there. <laughs> Even if it may seem like it's common sense, because Believe it or not, it's it's one of those things that does make you stand out. So uh, best of luck to you. And uh, yeah, sometimes making that transition over is a really good thing. Nurses will do this as well, um, if, especially if after they're getting, getting into that age where they're gonna retire, a lot of them still want to be able to use their knowledge base of their uh, medical terminology and anatomy and physio. And it works uh, transitioning over into medical coding because obviously we have no hands-on uh, contact with patients. And basically we're just dealing with the doctors or, or the other providers. So that is a, always a good uh, option if you are making that transition. So like I said, best of luck to you. Next letter. Uh, you have no idea the power of your words. I am currently taking a taking the pathophysiology and pharmacology. I did the anatomy and physiology and medical terminology. I feel discouraged at times, but I remember your words and it makes me want to keep going, even though it is a lot to learn and a long way to go. Thank you so much. You really make the difference. Thank you so much. Uh, that means a lot to me and I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for that feedback. Um, this field, being a medical coder, being in the health information field, and having this responsibility of looking at these records, interpreting them, understanding what it means, comprehending what you're reading, is such a large, tall order to fill. And when you think about it, all the things that we have to know as medical coders, and the fact that a lot of times when we're getting our training, we're getting training from programs, hopefully that are at least nine months. I know some people try to slide through in less time than that, but when you're going quickly like that, you have to think that you are gonna be in the driver's seat when it comes to doing the extra study. 
because doing that extra study and really trying hard to understand what's happening is going to pay off in the long run. Having any kind of gaps in your knowledge when it comes to specialty coding or when it comes to like your procedures and things like that, having gaps and not really understanding is going to hurt you, is going to hurt the provider. Most of all, it's going to hurt the patient because when you're not uh, selecting the correct codes because you're not fully understanding, but it sort of looks like this, but maybe this one fits um, and you're not truly understanding, it's when there's going to be errors and you don't want that. You want to make sure that you understand what's happening. And even though you might think, well, you know, it seems pretty clear, watch videos on that surgery. Make sure um, that you, you totally get it, you know, because believe it or not, it's those little details that will get you every single time. And so uh, I thank you so much to the viewer who made this comment. It really does mean a lot. And that's why I tried to be as a positive advocate for everybody as I possibly can, because I know it's a lot. And if you are just brand new to it, a lot of times they're not going to tell you when you get into these programs, they want you in there because if, if they're to tell you all this other stuff, uh, it could potentially scare off a lot of people and they don't want that. You know, they want to be able to make this as attractive as it, they could, they possibly can, because this field is very, um, very intense, very like the fact that you have to read and study all the time. It's not always the most popular thing. So that's why they have to give you all of the good options so that way they can get you in. But I am a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. So if you got into this field, um, even if it was on an accident, <laughs> uh, you never know. And that's probably where you should be. So if it is where you should be, then you should be embracing it. I'm just saying. So next letter. Uh, hi, I just came across your channel. I am 22 and I'm starting my medical coding certification classes online. And I was just going to ask if there was anything that could help me really learn the things I'm seeing in the book because I'm feeling that it's so fast paced, so many terms in one week. Is there any apps or websites or anything? Oh, to be 22 again. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, when it comes to apps, apps, any, any other of those things to learn medical coding? No. Uh, but then I am very low tech. And when I say low tech, I mean, I am by the book. I would prefer the book over a website, over a, um, over an app or any of those things. Apps are really good for like medical terminology or anatomy and physiology. It's good for those types of things. When it comes to the medical coding part, that's something that you're going to have to be more hands on with the book. And I'm sure there's apps out there, but again, I'm not going to rely on an app uh, when I need to be focused on getting familiar with the book and keeping my pace up with the book, especially when you are in school and you're going to have to go sit for your certification, however long it's going to take for you to get to the program. And once you go and sit for your certification, your speed looking up things in the book needs to be there because if you are slow and you are not able to find these terms in the book quickly or you're not able to look things up as fast you need to practice on that because yes while it may seem like you have hours uh, for these tests that time goes by very quickly and when you think about all the things that you have to read and get through it's it's even more um, it's even more that you have to look at so uh, my advice to you stay away from the apps for like uh, coding, uh, fo get focused on really getting familiar with the book. If you're using the apps for like anatomy and physio, that's fine. Uh, personally, I think that you should do flashcards, but whatever. <laughs> uh, there's also videos all over YouTube about uh, anatomy, physiology, medical terminology. That is my suggestion that you use those as well. Uh, but that's, that's just my advice. But a lot of this stuff you can look up, you can Google it. Um, the, the internet is out there and there's plenty of resources out there. So next letter. 
Um, there are some colleges and universities that offer an associate in applied science in medical coding. Would there be a difference between an associate of applied science and medical coding compared to a certificate? Certificate is a wrong language. Certification is what you what you need to think about um, because a certificate is like something that shows that you completed a program. A certification is when you get those letters after your name. There's a difference. Um, and then it says, okay, uh, but it is an so because I asked her to be clear. And she explained, it is an Associate of Applied Science in Medical Coding. The school that I'm offering offers two paths, a certificate and a degree, or a degree. They also offer the Associate of Applied Science in Health Information Technology, which is approved by the American Health Information Management Association to sit for the RHIT, which is the Registered Health Information Technician exam. And that's the associate's degree. That is the one offered with the American Health Information Management Association. Uh, but I am not taking the Associate of Applied Science in Health Information Technology. I am taking the Associate of Applied Science in Medical Coding. I'm just asking if there is a difference between someone who has an AS in Medical Coding compared to just a certificate. Here's the deal. You have, it's a lot of interchanging language here. Let's get this thing straight. Let's, let's break this down. The associate's degree, you have to be in an approved program. And like she said, there's two paths and one is approved with the American Health Information Management Association. If you are going to get an associate's degree, two years that you're going to be spending in school, two years worth of money, especially if you're paying out of your pocket for this associate's degree, then you should invest towards a uh, degree, if the RHIT. If that's what you want to do, if that's what you want to get, the only reason that you should be getting an associate's degree, it's not going to get you a job faster. I will just say that off the bat. Uh, but the only reason that you should be getting that is if you want to be a supervisor, an auditor, a lead coder, or uh, you want to do teaching, or you want to do something in that side of the house. RHITs, RHIAs, which is the Registered Health Information Administrator, that is the bachelor's degree. These designations, the RHIT, RHIA, those are meant for the managers because that is what they're getting trained for. The RHITs are a lot of hands-on with the coders, they're hands-on with the providers, and they can teach like at the schools and things like that. So that is what those designations are for. If that is not your goal, if your goal is just to be a medical coder, then you need to be concentrating on getting one of the certifications with either with the American Health Information Management Association or the American Academy of Professional Coders. Now, if you've been with my channel a while, you're going to be like, oh, here we go again. <laughs> but uh, I do have a lot of new viewers. So that's why I want to keep putting this information out there because I keep getting asked this question more and more lately. And it's great because that means I got more viewers, <laughs> more subscribers. And if you haven't had a chance to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on anything else. So anyway, <laughs> um, if you are going to be spending that kind of money, that college money uh, into a degree, then go for the RHIT. If you're going for the one that's the Associate of Applied Science with the emphasis in medical coding, that's not what employers are looking for because all they're saying is, okay, well, you went to college for medical coding. Okay, so what certification did you get? Did you get a CCS, which is a certified coding specialist that is offered with the American Health Information Management Association? And that is good for both the inpatient side and the outpatient side. That is the big kahuna of all the credentials, right? <laughs> Aside from the uh, um, degree designations, getting those off the table, the CCS is the uh, the cream of the crop. That is the best credential to get. That is the one that most employers are looking for. If you look uh, at the job listings for medical coders, they're looking for CCS. Why? Because they can code both inpatient and outpatient. This is the most versatile coder out there and it's just one designation that says this so um that is what i have to say about that so with that in mind 
If you just want to be a coder, then go with one of the association uh, credentials. They have um, with HEMA, uh, the ones, I'm just going to say three off the bat, okay? Uh, there's more, but just for the purposes of illustration in this video, if you're wanting to go with a HEMA, then you want either the CCS, but you have to go through an approved program or you have had to have met the educational requirements in order to sit for that. And all of that information is on the website at ahema.org or the CCA. The CCA, you can study independently. You do not have to go through a uh, major program for that. Uh, you can study independently on your own if you want to and um, to be able to sit for the exam. I also have an independent study video that you guys can watch if you're interested in doing that and skipping um, all of these uh, major programs. You can study on your own, take the, the CCA, and then go on from there. And before anybody says anything, there are employers that do look for the CCA. There's a lot of trash talk out there about the CCA. It's very upsetting because to me, if you're going to look at a credential because, oh, well, the employers don't ask for that. If you're looking on these job postings, they do ask for the CCA. And the CCA is not an easy credential to get, okay? <laughs> so I will say that. And so if you are interested in that uh, credential, by all means, go for it. There's also the American Academy of Professional Coders. They have the CPC. And it's going to have a little dash A when you first get it because that means apprentice. They have a whole thing <laughs> on their website about uh, why they have the apprentice um, and what you need to do to get it off of there. Because a lot of employers look for the CPC as well. So any one of those three, all right, that you can choose from. And those are your, your credentials uh, for medical coding. But going through a college program that is just an Associate of Applied Science in medical coding, the first thing they're gonna ask you, these employers, is what other certification do you have? So basically, you spend a lot of money to be taught medical coding, but you still have to sit for a certification. Whereas you could have just gone the certification route and just skipped the whole college thing and just gone with the program and it would have been way cheaper. So that is something that you guys should think about. A lot of times these schools are not going to tell you this stuff either because they want your money and they don't care. They want to be able to, I shouldn't say they don't care, um, but the thing is they get your money, they have your money <laughs> uh, and they get you through the program, whatever they said that, you know, this program is about. And a lot of times they'll, they'll use a language that it's accredited. You have to be very careful because I have seen them say, oh, this program is accredited but it is with a, a certificate program. And I will say it's a, it is a certificate program because no one's asking for that. Um, there is another one out there that no one asks for, but they always say that they're accredited and they're accredited through an association that um, employers are not looking for when they're looking for medical coders, okay? So there is a difference there. And it's very important that you guys do your research so that you understand. I have so many videos out about explaining the differences in the credentials and what does it mean and what do I recommend. If you're wanting to be a competitive medical coder, you have to be certified with a HEMA or AAPC, period. Uh, you can look in any of these job listings and see what I'm saying, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to lead you guys wrong because I, uh, I'm one of those ones that doesn't believe in and oh, I'm going to promote this or oh, I'm going to promote that. Case in point, I'm with the American Health Information Management Association. You guys see me. I always talk about AAPC. I have nothing to do with AAPC, but I'm still bringing you guys both informations because I think that it is important that you make the decision on your own what association you want to be involved with because um, both offer uh, different benefits, right? And it's important because I think for different people, it is uh, more beneficial. So uh, either one, you know, you just got to pick one <laughs> and just start with one. Uh, because when you start trying to add a bunch of different credentials after your name, it has to be legitimate when you're adding additional credentials. It's got to be able to promote you 
in a way that is uh, more technical and not that you're trying to just gather up a bunch of credentials just to make yourself look good because the people in the industry know. They know what these credentials mean. So if you're if you're adding on credentials and it looks like um, you are just doing this just to sort of get yourself more attractive to potential employers, they're gonna expect you to have experience to go along with all of those credentials. So that is something to think about, especially in the beginning and especially if you haven't gotten a job yet, okay? And keep in mind this also, a lot of employers will pay for you to get educated. So again, don't go so deep into your own pocket that you're gonna put yourself in a financial bind trying to get ahead when the employers are out there and they're willing to pay, pay for your education. That's something to keep in mind too, because we are in an intellectual field. And so when you have that, it's going to take more money. And if an employer is willing to pay for you to get more educated, then by all means, <laughs> go for that because um, they're, getting, they're getting benefit from you and you're getting benefit from them. And that is exactly what a good <laughs> partnership does, right? The more educated you get, the more uh, technical you will be when you are coding the better it is for their facility. But the the byproduct is you've gained all of this education and you didn't have to pay out of pocket for it. So keep yourselves out of debt when it comes to getting into this field and be smart about it. Be smart about what you're investing your money in. Uh, getting an associate of applied science and medical coding, again, they're gonna ask you, what other credential do you have? Because they're gonna need you to have another credential. Because they even ask people who have the degree designations, most, some employers, I shouldn't say most, but some employers will ask them to have an additional credential along with their degree designation. So they want to make sure that they, they have the, the chops to do the coding as well. Because uh, the degree designations, their concentration is not coding. It's more on the managerial side of the house the statistical side of the house, that's their concentration more than anything else. So that is something to know. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. So thank you so much for your letters again. I really appreciate it. And I hope that uh, you will uh, submit your letter if you're interested in having it read on a future episode. So I'm going to wrap this one up. So if you're a medical coder, a medical coding student, somebody curious about the fascinating world of medical coding, a provider or a nurse, I invite you to like and subscribe and follow me on my journey in medical coding. I will see y'all next time. Bye.